the new heavens and earth. In Isaiah chapter 65, this is the time when the people of Israel had came home from their exile into Babylon. During that chapter, we see the first clear look as passage about the new heavens and the new earth. Right now, the earth that we know, it will all be changed. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. Isaiah, he foresaw the accomplishment of Jesus' atonement on the cross. And the people were sinning and justified, God declaring them righteous, God giving those people to Jesus. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him, he has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Death itself is punishment for people's sins. What about the people who God has declared righteous? Will they die separated from God? No. God has given them eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Question, is there a home that is suitable for those that God has declared righteous? Those in Christ who are made righteous by the Holy Spirit? Is there a home that is suitable, that is right for them? If so, where? Well, that's the new heavens and the new earth, and that is Jesus' goal. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. There will be no sadness. God himself, he will rejoice because his people have been reconciled to him in full. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem to be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. The new heavens and the new earth, it will have full peace. Even the animals, they will all get along perfectly. The wolves, the sheep, the lions, and the oxen, they will all be at peace. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Jesus, he is the only one who brought about this transformation, this change that glorifies himself. Jesus started making all things new. When? It was when the people of Israel came out of exile from Babylon. And this shows clearly that things are being changed ever since he entered the world through the virgin birth. He has been preaching and ministering. He died on the cross and he rose again. And this started the change and the progression of this transformation. And now he is in heaven ruling the world. Has this time been completed? No, but it will. And history will show that the consummation of this, it will all happen, all of this success when Jesus Christ comes back again. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then in his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule, every authority and power. John Calvin, he's a pastor of long ago, and he wrote that the prophet speaks of the restoration of the church. He's talking about the spiritual church after their return from Babylon. And he says that this restoration 
you know, it's not, it's imperfect if it's not extended as far as to Christ. And even now, we were in the progress and the accomplishment of it, of those things, which will not be fulfilled until the last resurrection. That's our bodily resurrection. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. God is right now. He is making all things right. All things new. The gospel is spreading. The truth. All things are made, being made new in this earth. And changing. Being made right. And the Lord will change all things fully. He will renew all things. There will be no sadness. There will be no pain. There will be nothing that we do not want to face. And that is great hope to us that we can look forward to. That we know that God is making all things right. And he is helping us right now to patiently endure pain as we are here on this earth. Hey, you know, we're here on this earth only a brief time compared to eternity in the new heavens and new earth. You know, I was talking about this uh, this great hope that we have. And, you know, it is a great hope. It is a big hope. It is a huge hope. I want to emphasize this. Great hope, no huge hope that we have. The earth all will be changed into the new heavens and the new earth. The whole universe will be changed. And the Lord's light will shine. We will be in his presence and sin will be gone no more. We fully at peace. Everything will be renewed. All of God's plans come together. Even the animals will be at peace. Everything. Everything. All the nations will get along. It is a huge hope indeed. And we should rejoice right now and not be discouraged to see problems that are happening here. You know, God is not small. He is huge. He is great. And everything goes into his plan and will into the full consummation of his kingdom that will be shown very clearly. Don't be discouraged. Be joyful, remembering that God rejoices that his people will be right, reconciled to him in full in his presence. God rejoices. We should rejoice also. It's important that we rejoice looking forward to this great hope that we have. Corn Dio.